So, wow, you are looking uh, rather, <laughs> I don't know what it is. You're either settling into uh, being a member of the production crew or you uh, have just visited the Midwest. What's going on here? I know. I do look like a super fan right now, don't I? You do. <laughs> so I just got back from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And if you are listening to us and you cannot see, I am wearing my Blatt's beer baseball cap and my- My mile. grandfather's favorite, incidentally. Did you know that- By the case. By the case. Oh, grandpa was a fan. He was serious. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Blatt's beer. Uh, Pamela Anderson got discovered by wearing a Blatt's beer tank top at a baseball game. So I'm hoping something will happen right now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to uh, crush your dreams. but uh, It could happen. Yeah. It could happen. I mean, look, you're pretty enough. I just think maybe you're a little, you know, maybe the window I've isn't missed the curve. totally there. Yeah, yeah, I, that, yeah. Could, that could be, but I still hope. Um, and I'm wearing my Mile of Music t-shirt, which is a music festival that happens every year in Appleton, Wisconsin, which is what brought us brought me, not you, because you you stayed back, but brought me I to- I was not invited. No, actually, you were not invited. <laughs> this was not a trip that James was invited on, uh, which uh, the Mile of Music was what piqued my interest in visiting Wisconsin, and then it took a whole turn, and uh, I am, yeah, I'm now like covered in Wisconsin gear because I am really a fan. All right, so we're going to jump into it. Let's talk about ladies' trip to Wisconsin. Here we go. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hey listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All Stars Podcast. Welcome back, All-Stars, to another episode of Skip Town. We are so excited you are here to join us. Denise has a very special report. I do. <laughs> I just got back from Wisconsin. I want to say Milwaukee, but I wasn't just in Milwaukee. But, you know, James took his little trip to Egypt, and I went to Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's equal, I think, in my mind. I think so, too. I had a lot of fun. Oh, good, good, good. You were approaching critical mass on getting away for a little while, I must say, because you were you were a little snippy and a little moody. You were you were tired of me. It was obvious. And you were a little tired of sort of everything and everyone. I don't know. I disagree. You disagree? I was just being me. You were just being you? I don't think so. I think I, think I was being pleasant every day. I think I was a joy to be around, so I have no idea what you're saying. I would not classify it as such. Uh, there was a night where we were coming home with Parker from dinner, and I went to turn on the radio in the car, and you snapped on me. I don't know why. Defend yourself. I'm not because sure. Because you needed time away. That's why. I That's don't think point. so. I think I didn't want to listen to your music. Oh, yeah, <laughs> probably not. But normally you can stomach it. It was just on that particular night, I, I kind of felt like I said to myself, she really needs to do her own thing for a little bit. Oh, all right. Well, whatever you thought... It may have been a very good idea, and I was not aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> we well, like to paint this picture like I'm the one who needs to get away, or he needs time to himself, or he needs to get out and exercise, or whatever. Just saying, I recognize in this particular instance, when you said you were planning a trip, to, when you first started hinting at the trip- like Were you jumping for joy? For you. You were I had jumping just been, for joy for yourself. I had just yourself. been to Egypt, so I, I knew the value of getting away. Okay. You know? Yeah, there's a little, but let's be honest, there was a little, there was a little flutter inside of Butterfly. She's like, yes, she's got to go. I can have the whole, this whole week to myself. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I just had two weeks to myself. I feel like I didn't need it as much as you needed okay. it. Uh, it was nice. I didn't realize I needed it, I guess, until I was gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was, I never hit Lisa's hand for the radio. Not once. Not once. Not once. You never got snippy with the ladies. I don't think so, but they'll be, they'll have to be the ones to comment. Um, I think it was quite, I think it was quite pleasant, you know, like I think I am with you all the time, but, but maybe, maybe I did need. You really think you're pleasant with me all the time? No, no, I don't. Yeah. I just said that. Strike that from the record. Yeah. No, I do not think that. Uh, okay. So Lisa is, you know, at this point, a lifelong friend. Yes, <laughs> she really lived is. in LA for so uh -huh. long. And we knew her for so much of it. And look, we've been on vacation with her 
uh, more than once and we're still friends. And everyone knows a vacation makes or breaks a True. friendship. And this is now my third or fourth. I mean, I've done weekends with her away too. Like when she would go on business trips, I went one time with her to for a weekend and overnight away in Santa Barbara. So I've been away with her, I would say like four times now. And we still enjoy each other and we are still friends. So that there's something to be said about that. There's definitely something to be said about being able to travel with somebody yeah. for sure. But not just that. You guys have been intertwined in your gym experiences over the years. Yep. yep. Uh, she and I even worked out at the same gym for a while. She was my weight loss buddy uh -huh. for one particular challenge. I yeah. remember I was not a good partner. Uh, she would come in and she would turn, you know, they made you journal all your food and hers would be like asparagus and salad and chicken breast. And mine was, I ate 24 tortilla chips, drank three vodkas and a scotch. <laughs> and they were like, aren't you hungry? And I was like, yeah, I'm like starving. I didn't last. You were really- I was a horrible partner. Yeah. I it, really was. Well, I feel bad. It's okay. I think, I, I think she's over that. I think she is too. I think she's done just fine without me. <laughs> she, she, she cut the dead weight and that dead weight was me. <laughs> she did. Well, let's, okay, to be fair, it takes a special person to be Lisa's partner. She is a D1 volleyball athlete from college. Former. Yes. Former D1 volleyball athlete. And she has maintained her athleticism through her adult life. So she's a Spartan racer. I mean, she does the whole barbed wire crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> which makes no sense to me. And I'm like, you're too pretty to be like crawling in mud under barbed wires. But, uh, it's so kind of yeah. true. She is too pretty for that. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but she does it so well. And so effortlessly it seems she does. Yeah. And, uh, so she still does that. I mean, she just hit her 50th and this girl is competing in a CrossFit competition, like in two weeks or something crazy. So, mm -hmm. um, while her and Jody, who is Lisa's friend, but also now became my friend over the years, um, Jody is also a, her, now she is Lisa's CrossFit companion. So while those two were off um, in the mornings working out, you know, I was sleeping in, enjoying a little, uh, <laughs> a little time to myself back at the Airbnb we had rented while we were visiting Wisconsin. So there were three of us. Okay. So let's talk about how all this came about with Lisa. So last year, 2022, she actually, she knows, obviously I'm a music lover. If you've been listening to the podcast, anyone except here. Except for my music. Go on. Yes. Except for his music. I am a music lover. And oh, by the way, if you're listening to this or you're watching on YouTube, check our socials on, uh, on Instagram, TikTok. I'll be posting lots of stuff from my trip to uh, Wisconsin, and that includes this Mile of Music festival they have in a town called Appleton. So the Mile of Music- Wait, you're getting off track. I just asked you how the trip came about with Lisa. I'm, I'm going to tell you Dial like it that. back. Okay. So Lisa contacted me, well, we talk all the time, but last year she said, hey, she grew up in this small town called Appleton, Wisconsin. Appleton. She said, Every year- Population 500. 65,000. Wow. That's yeah, not a small town. It's not. When she said it was a small town, I was thinking small town because we've been to small right. towns. And then when I asked her the population, she's like, ah, oh, I think like 65, 75. I'm like, okay, that is not a small town. Mm -hmm. So I went to her quote unquote small town uh, to go to a music festival called Mile of Music. So last year she told me that her town has this music festival wherein you walk up and down the main street of the town. Is that why it's called a mile of music? Yes, because it's a mile. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> and you pop in and out of bars, um, parks. Uh, the Hilton Hotel has a courtyard where they have a stage set up. So you're popping in and out of, I'm going to just say venues, to listen to bands from all over the country. It's not just Wisconsin. All different styles, I presume. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, first of all, whoever is the booking agent for this festival, props to you. Oh, you're giving a shout out already. I like oh, it. Every single venue we went into, top notch. When you go to these festivals, I've been to several, I'm not talking Coachella, I'm talking local festivals. Maybe if you're lucky, 30% of the bands will be really good and you'll be interested in staying for more than five minutes. Um, and so you have 70% that's like, eh, just give me a beer. Let me get out of here. Yeah. Um, that was not the case. Every place we went into, we stayed like for like a half an hour to listen to the music. Uh, the way it works is you walk into, I'm just going to give an example. Mm -hmm. One venue is a bar. You walk into the bar and on the right-hand side will be a poster of all the bands playing that day. 
their names and the time slots. So you're not walking in asking who is this band. And that happens at a lot of festivals, unless you're on an app or this or that, or you catch a flyer, you're just like, who is this band that I'm listening to? Then you have to ask people in the bar. No, this was so well organized outside of the venue and inside they had posters where you knew exactly who you were watching at what time. So if you walked in at like 6.45, you look, oh, it's 6.30 is this band. I'm I'm here. I'm watching this band. Then you got to see what time the next band was coming on. It was so good. So we would walk down the street and we would hop into one bar. And then what would happen is maybe we'd go to the park and the park had a band shell. So Obviously, those were like kind of like the more popular acts. We'd go there, hang out, listen, then go back on the avenue. One time we walked into, like I said, the Hilton. They had a courtyard. Oh, it was incredible. The music that was playing there, the artist, amazing. Every time we stepped in there. And the festival just was like that from the time it started, which I believe was like one Mm o'clock to maybe midnight. I mean, we were there at all different hours. So you just, you knew it was the it was the festival and you were going to catch, you were going to catch bands. Uh, I loved it. It it was, it was incredible when she told me about it, it exceeded my expectations. I literally yeah, just you're thought- you're not normally a festival person. Not at all. And I just, cause it's a lot of bad music. It's a lot of walking. It's a lot of heat. And you're just like, oh, nope, that was not the case here. The weather was perfect. There wasn't a ton of walking because you could just hop into any venue you wanted where you heard music. Mm-hmm. Um, the music was good. That made it a great time. Uh, I enjoyed it. I would highly recommend it. If you are a music lover, go to the mile of music in Appleton, Wisconsin, check out the dates next year. It's usually always around the same time from what Lisa told me. It's always in August. Um, they have an app, which made it easy. If you wanted to follow a band, then you could go to every venue they played on the weekend, but you could also just follow the venues as well. It was extremely organized. And so I'm wearing my mile music t-shirt right now. I see that you're representing. I totally am. (laughs) I loved it. Okay. So wait, you did the festival the first day you got there or no, because Jody wasn't there with you when you first arrived, right? She was not. So the way the trip was planned was I would fly into Milwaukee, uh, and Lisa and I would spend the night there. And then the next day Jody would arrive. We'd spend the day with Jody in Milwaukee. And then head over to uh, Appleton. Oh, so you did Milwaukee first. Let's talk about that. I did. You skipped that. <laughs> I did. Well, you asked me why. No, what yeah, brought yeah. me to Wisconsin? Totally. So what brought me to Wisconsin was Appleton, right. Mile of Music. I, I I, didn't know where the trip, what the trip was going to uh, turn into. I let Lisa be the tour guide. Yeah. So when she said to fly into Milwaukee and we'll stay a couple of days there, I was actually really surprised. I thought we were going to go straight to Appleton. But um, it was, it was a great surprise because I have never been to Milwaukee. Growing up in Chicago, you would think that Milwaukee only being a few hours away, I think it's- Yeah, I was going to ask, have you ever been to Wisconsin at all? minutes. It's 90 minutes away. No, and you know why? You've never been to Wisconsin, Wisconsin? Oh, I'm sorry. I have been to Wisconsin. I've been to like the Wisconsin Dells, which is- like Disneyland for was people in Wisconsin. It's a destination where you go and they have like water rides. <laughs> Disneyland for people in Wisconsin. Uh huh. That's exactly okay. what it's like. And anybody who's been to the Dells is like, oh yeah, did you know? That's exactly what it is. Okay. Do they have their own characters and stuff or what? I don't know. It was so long ago. Like I was ten. Were you a kid? Yeah, I was. You're a kid. Yeah, I was ten. Oh, okay. So, I'm just so fascinated because Wisconsin's a state that I've never driven through, or you know, it's not exactly on the way. I know from Ohio to California. Nobody so. ever says, "Hey, let's go to Wisconsin." But if you live in Chicago, then you saw all the commercials growing up with the Wisconsin Dells, and it was like, "Oh, I want to go to the Dells." So most families would take a trip to the Dells for a weekend. Okay. I mean, Milwaukee's only 90 minutes away from Chicago. The Dells is more like three hours, I believe, from Chicago. So it's a drive. So it's a thing. It's a family. It's like a Wally World type thing in Wisconsin. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So enough about the Dells. Let's get back to Milwaukee. I've always been fascinated because- the A, they have the Brewers. Yeah. And then I know, I don't know how close Green Bay is to Milwaukee. I think it's a little further away, obviously. But, um, you know, other than the two major sports teams, for me, I haven't heard a lot of Milwaukee, period. <laughs> but it looks really clean. It looks like the photos that come back are all great. I mean, with the exception of Jeffrey Dahmer, everything's cool, right? Yeah. And it's funny that you say that because being from Chicago, I laughed when you said I haven't heard a lot about Milwaukee because being from Chicago, like 
you're, you live in a city that has so much. So you're not going to go to a city that has less because Milwaukee mm. is like a really small version, I think, of Chicago. It really is. It's There's a river that runs along it. The building and architecture is similar. I mean, they're only 90 minutes away. So the feel is very roughly the same. But you would you would just wouldn't leave Chicago to spend a day in Milwaukee. People leave Milwaukee to spend a day in Chicago. So, um, but but I have to tell you, if you've never been to a big city, go to Milwaukee. Like if I had not grown up in Chicago, I literally would have been doing backflips had Milwaukee been one of the first cities I ever visited. I was doing backflips being from Chicago when I was there for the two days I was there. It's incredible. Well, yeah, because you're over big city life. So, Not just it- that, but living in a city and visiting big cities – I could see what Milwaukee has to offer, and it is really plentiful. I mean, for anyone wanting to live in a city, you have that city life. Mm -hmm. Oh, the food is really good. You have sports. You have uh, sporting venues. You have concerts. Okay, let's just talk about the first night I landed. Yeah. We're driving to our hotel, and we drive by like a beautiful, it's called the Paps Theater, a beautiful- As in pa- Paps Blue Ribbon? Yeah, Paps okay. Blue Ribbon. Because a family is, they're, you know, they're from Milwaukee. Huge fan. So on the marquee, the night I arrived, Band of Horses and the Revivalists are playing. Oh, two very good alt-rock names. Okay. Wow, okay. So I say to Lisa- That's a good bill. It's excellent. So I say to Lisa, now I've heard Band of Horses, I've obviously heard Revivalists, you know, I'm not a huge fan, meaning like I don't have them on my Spotify, but I know who they are. I've listened to them. I wouldn't turn them off on the radio. I'm, we're here. We're going to see these bands. So I drag Lisa with me and 30 minutes before Band of Horses comes on, we go to the box office and get like great seats. I mean, it's all general admission, but my point is we show up, we walk in 30 minutes before the band is going to start. General admission, 100 feet from the stage. It's crazy. You can't do that in Chicago. No. You can't do that in LA. Definitely so to not. be able to see I don't think you could even do that in Orlando. James, this is our city. Wow. I'm not kidding. Holy cow. No, this is I our city. I thought I was like the town slut. Every time we roll up into a new city, I'm the one like I could totally do this. I'm always trying to talk you into it. This is the city. You, it's you've incredible. gone from Corpus Christi to Bernie now to Milwaukee. Well, here's why. You're like three for three in the last two months. I know. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm so fair weathered. You are. I'm so impressionable. As we discussed in the last episode. I'm so impressionable. You are. Okay. I here's what I loved about this city. We couldn't get the land that you want, but you could get a beautiful three thousand square foot home three blocks from the lake. Wow. For $400,000. Shut the front door. No. And, and the property is like decent. It's like a 9,000 square foot lot, maybe maybe 10,000. About what we had in LA. Yeah. Slightly larger. Um, for a bigger home. The culture is everywhere. I mean, everywhere. People are riding bikes. People are jogging. People are kayaking in like the little pond, like outside of the lake. Uh, people are at the lake. There's beach volleyball. There's tiki huts set up all along the lake to like, grab a little cocktail while you're enjoying, you know, your uh, beach life that day. Nice. They cater to the people in that city so much. There's free transportation around the city, literally a trolley called the Hop, because everything in, uh, in Milwaukee is all about beer. Of course, the so, hops. Yeah. Hop on the hop. And so that's free. Uh, the downside, eight months of winter. I was just going to say, what was the weather like when you were there? Oh, perfect. Like, don't ever go in August because you'll be so fooled. Like like me, you'll, you'll think that it's the most perfect place to live. And then when November rolls around, you're crying the blues because you're freezing. It's November. You're, you know, 30 degrees and you're wondering when this is going to end and it's not going to end for eight more months. Mm. So so what was the temperature though when you were there? 70, roughly 78. 78. No humidity. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I but think then the- how can you have any sort of lake life or beach life? That's still really not warm enough to swim or anything. Are you kidding? When you have eight months of winter- <laughs> I Are you guess. kidding me? Your blood is 78, like molasses. 78 is like the tropics. <laughs> what are you talking oh my about? Gosh, it sounds like a polar no. bear plunge to me, but all No, right. there are people yeah, in that water. It. And uh, You're right. Their blood is thicker for sure. They're used to it. 
I loved it. I mean, all I kept saying over and over again is I could live here if it wasn't eight, one, eight months of winter. I could live here if it wasn't eight months of winter because it's cheaper than Chicago. And you get huh. you get the benefits of city life like Chicago. Rent is cheaper. I mean, uh, we took a tour of the city and our tour guide, I don't know, I think one bedroom is $1,500. Where can you get a one bedroom for $1,500? It's, it's like the house we were looking for 10 years ago or in some of the cities we were looking at 10 years ago before Austin exploded. Yeah. It sounds like that. It just... Well, Austin exploded because Austin has great weather. I'm not. I'm not saying why it exploded. I'm just saying Milwaukee's not. It used to be touchable. Yeah, Milwaukee's not going to explode ever because it's too cold. Yeah. So I, I'm out. If we, I might be in by yourself. It sounds by yourself. It sounds very fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like winter. You're I so don't. weird. I could do a couple months of winter though. You're so weird. You were like, I'm never doing winter. I'm never doing winter. And now you're like, huh. Well, yeah, I did turn around on Chicago eventually after all these years. Well, the 20 years. It's too late. Okay. It's, the ship sailed. Milwaukee's new. Milwaukee's different. It's I'll fresh. I'll take you in the summer. Like, if we, like, let's just talk. Like, Milwaukee's the new student. <laughs> <laughs> if we were really wealthy, which we're not, but if, like, we were wealthy, I would say, sure, get a summer home in Milwaukee. Oh, that's funny. Get I know. A summer home, a in, summer home in Milwaukee. Because you would love it. The girls would love it. So anyway, uh, Milwaukee also has, uh, in downtown Milwaukee, if you've ever been to Pike's Place in Seattle, where it's like an outdoor open market, Milwaukee has two of those uh, downtown, but they're, they're enclosed, but they are so fantastic. You walk in and there's different, you know, restaurants and fresh fruit. I cool. mean- uh, there's there's bars along the sidewalk where you can just walk up like a, and grab a, a some a cocktail. It's yeah. just um it's very very friendly. Uh, no no homeless. I saw four in forty eight hours, and I mean I'm really scratching for a fourth. I I really may have just done three, and the fourth one was a hiker. Okay. Yeah. Could have been a hiker. Yeah, because you don't never you were know. Playing the Salt Lake City game. I was, I was, because there is a lot of outdoor activities in Milwaukee. Oh, really? Well, so, people are always at the park, this and that. Okay. So you know, you a never know. A lot of bike know. trails and all that. Yep, people on um, bikes. So yeah. all right. So obviously, there's a music scene, even when there's not a festival. Oh, in Milwaukee. Okay, so the night that we were there, and we saw in one in one show, we saw Band of Horses open up for the Revivalists. Mm -hmm. That same night, Rick Springfield was playing. Rick Springfield and Paramore. All in the same city, okay. literally with all in the same city within four blocks. Fun for the whole family. Oh, pick it. Yeah. Send the kids to Paramore and you and uh, grandpa go see Rick Springfield. Uh -huh. <laughs> we were sitting at a bar with a woman who was going to her Rick Springfield concert and we were going to see the Revivalists and Band of Horses. Oh, uh, you're yeah. keeping, you're skewing young, babe. I like it. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, no, no disrespect to Rick Springfield. Okay. So what about the food scene though, real quick before we leave Milwaukee? Uh, the food scene was great. You know, you have to do the traditional brat when you're there. Of course. Uh, they're really big on their, they're really big on their Bloody Marys. I had no idea. Did you know that, that mm. Milwaukee does crazy stuff with a Bloody Mary? Like they'll have a sandwich sitting on top of a Bloody Mary. Really? Like, I had a brat sandwich, a little slider. No way. Sitting on top of my Bloody Mary, they do lobster tails. In Bloody Marys, really? Yeah, like they do. Never knew crazy that. I mean, we've stuff. hit an occasional restaurant. There's one in San Diego that does crazy stuff with Bloody Marys, but other than one-offs, no. No, it's a meal. I've never known a whole city to be. Yeah, it's a meal. So you can order it. a Bloody Mary and get your meal on top of it. Nice. So it, it's really great. So the whole like you should have a bite to eat while you're drinking. They really take that to the next level. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. You know, one thing pace that, is important. Pace is important. So Bloody Marys are a thing. And brats. And cheese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So uh, I learned while I was there that there are only two places with master cheesemakers. Really? Do you know those two places? I do not. Switzerland, Wisconsin. No way. That's it. Wow. What makes someone a master cheesemaker? No idea. Because okay. I'm not a master cheesemaker. Okay. But I know that there are only two places in the world where master cheesemakers are found. Switzerland, and Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. Great uh, to know. It is great to know. And then, because now you know if you want to get good cheese. Everybody knows the best cheese in the country comes from Wisconsin. But they don't ship in the summer. I tried to get cheese shipped. They don't do it in the summer because of the heat. So, I'm going to get all sweaty. 
Nobody yes. wants sweaty cheese. So if you want cheese and you want it shipped to your house and you happen to live in Florida or you happen to live in Arizona or you happen to live in Washington State, you're going to have to wait till November to contact a cheese company in Wisconsin and have them send you cheese. Cheese for Thanksgiving, people. Yeah. Uh, so they're known, obviously, for their beer. There's, okay, Paps Blue Ribbon, Schlitz, Blatz, and Absolutely right. Milwaukee's Best. Oh, yeah. And Milwaukee's best. So um, if I'm missing one, it's just because they're Anheuser Busch, aren't they? Oh no, they're from St. Louis. No, yeah. Uh, so I think those are the four that originated in Milwaukee. Okay. And um, oh, there is this crazy Milwaukee's best, incidentally, got me through college. Did it? Yeah. Is it the best though? Is it better than Pat? It was like four dollars and thirty cents for a twelver. So Oh my gosh. Yeah. Does it have I mean, the same back in the day. alcohol content as other beer? No. But if you drink all twelve of them, you're good. Okay. <laughs> I mean, not that I ever did that. Just speaking so, from experience. All right. Beer. This is a crazy law that's on the books in, in Wisconsin. Tell me. If you are under 18 years old mm -hmm. and you are with your parents, yeah, you can drink beer wherever, whenever. That's awesome. So if you're 10 and your parents want to hand you a beer, you can do it. <laughs> that is great. But from 18 to 21... You cannot. Nothing. You can't, even if you're with your parents, because it wow. is against the law from 18 to 21 to serve to an adult alcohol. Right. Isn't that crazy? Oh, that is kind of a crazy so loophole. So think about it. You know how most kids use a fake ID? They're going right? to do the reverse. They are. If they're 19, they're going to say they're 17. It's like they're trying to get into like you know college at the age of 21. They're going to keep saying they're 16 over and over and over again. Uh-huh. Exactly. For three years, yeah. they're 16. Uh-huh. Oh, that's great. I know. I was like, that's really funny. That's genius. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Okay. So then after Milwaukee, you head off to Appleton. We do. But before we're leaving for Appleton, we decide to take a little uh, road trip. To do what? Check out Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Oh, no. I'm sure everybody does that. Oh, <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. Is it still standing? It cannot it's simply not. be the same building, right? It's not. When I was at Loyola University of Chicago- I was on the debate team and we were debating. Um, Jeffrey Dahmer. No, we oh. were debating. I don't know what school. One of the schools in Milwaukee, I think it was Marquette. And I said to our coach, can we go by Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment? Because she was actually from Milwaukee. I just want to interject something real quick that the fact that Denise was on a debate team in college is not lost upon me as a husband. Go on. Okay. So anyway. Um, I asked her if we can go to Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. He had just been arrested. It, it was just a matter of weeks. And she said, sure. Well, everyone on that bus was like, what? Are you crazy? Da, 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 da. I can't believe it. Like, just poo-pooing the whole thing. Well, I made her go. So we went and the yellow tape You was won that debate? Oh, I did win that debate. <laughs> Good one, babe. Good one. Good. I know we Do you know how hard it was to like win debates For with you? those no. kids no. against me? Yeah. yeah. No. Um, anyway, won the debate. So we pull up on his building. Yellow tape is still there. Because mm. he had just gotten arrested like five days before. Okay. And um, Wow, that's like fresh, fresh. Yeah, I think it was like five days, maybe a week. It was like really fresh. Holy cow. Yeah, yellow tape was still there. Everyone thought I was the most morbid person in the world on that bus. They were like, "You're in, who are you? That's what, who are you? Why are you on this team? You're crazy. How much you want to bet every single one of those of course, every, people? Every got, everyone got out, didn't they? No, we didn't get out. It's oh. in a really bad neighborhood. Oh. Oh, yeah. You can't get out. Is that right? Yeah. And okay, it was, I kind of remember it was, that. It was late at night. It was like 11 o'clock at night. So no one got out of oh, the bus. Oh, Lord. Okay. But what I'm saying is, how much do you want to bet that every single person on that bus has told someone they went by oh, Jeffrey yeah. Dahmer's apartment? And somebody would say, oh, wow, really? You were there? And they, were, and they act. And they're like, oh, like, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm on our debate team, I talked to bus driver to go. Uh-huh. It was <laughs> me. It was me that did that. Anyway, oh so God. Lisa's You're like- living your glory days on the debate team. Uh -huh. This is awesome. So here's what's crazy, though. Lisa takes us to the neighborhood. It's still a really bad neighborhood. I knew where the apartment was. We passed it, and she's like, oh, I think it's up here on the right. Now, mind you, it's just an empty lot. But I vividly remember how we got there, where we turned. And I said to her, oh, no, you need to do a U-turn. It's back there. And she's like- 
really? And I'm like, I'm telling you, it's back there. So now it's an empty lot. There's a sign that says no trespassing and all of that. But you So know, you can't remember how to log into your email, but you can remember where Jeffrey Dahmer's house was 30 years ago. There is something wrong with me. There is, totally. <laughs> Yes, I remembered it very clearly like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. Yeah, so we did that and then we headed off to Appleton. Appleton. Tell me about Appleton. Where'd you stay, by the way, at like either place? Okay, In Milwaukee, you stayed at a hotel, I presume? We did. We stayed at like a um, Fairfield Inn or something like that. Lisa, Lisa was the tour guide for this whole trip, so... We let her pick so everything So if it sucked, out. blame it on her? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But Lisa's an amazing tour guide, so nothing sucked at all. She's definitely on her home turf there. Oh, yeah, she is. Um, we, we She picked out an Airbnb in Appleton, and that was like super, super basic and expensive for what it was, and um, they didn't have like shampoo or body wash. It was like the most- Oh, so it was your normal Airbnb. Exactly. It was your 2023 Airbnb. Exactly. It wasn't your 2018 Airbnb. No, not yeah. at all. Okay. So so it was like par for the course and silly me, I didn't bring any, like, um, and silly me, I didn't bring any amenities like shampoo, body wash. No exfoliates, nothing like that. I was like, we're going to be in an Airbnb. And then the minute we walked in and, you know, we, I was like, ah, oh. it was a bar of Irish Springs. Yeah. Lisa had to go out and buy stuff. No, there was no bar. There really? was no bar of Irish oh, wow. Spring. So when you, yeah. But look, I can't, I can't do this with Airbnb. I'm just, yeah, no, we it's can't. so We're bad. We're not talking about that. No, uh, no, there was no bar of <laughs> Let's Irish. Get to Appleton. Yeah, there was no bar of Irish swing soap. So we had to go out and get some things. So yeah, that was, a, that was, you know, yeah. Well, at least you didn't have to step in over anybody on your way into the CVS getting your stuff for the Airbnb. That is true. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about Appleton. First impressions. Uh, it's a cute town, but it's not little. Like I was expecting to roll up on a cute little general store and stuff like that. No, it's like, it's a town town. Yeah. And um, it's really cute. They have a great downtown drag. Like I call it the drag. Like, you know, where people, you know, Lisa explained like during high school, they would literally take their cars up and down the street and like, oh, yeah. you know, like that sort of thing. Yeah, cruising the strip. Cruising the strip. That's you it. You never cruise did that. No. That's so I was like, what is it? Cruising you got on the, the L. Yeah, I did. You never had to cruise a strip like Lisa and I did. <laughs> and I liked it. I, I thought it was adorable. She took us the the first night there to like her hometown restaurant where the kids go for a uh, homecoming and prom and oh, stuff nice. like that. It was really cute. And um, we met two of her high school friends. It always amazes me that people still have friends from high school. I have like two. I mean, like, I have a handful. And Lisa has more than two, but two of her high school friends joined us for dinner. Mm -hmm. And, um, we had a great time uh, that night. We walked and we listened to music. We had dinner. It was really fun. And then the next day we actually took a break from the mile of music and we went to an area called door County, Wisconsin. Oh yeah. Door County. I've heard a lot. We actually have heard a lot because we've had a, we actually have heard a lot because we have a few listeners that live in Door County, and they've suggested that we visit Door County. Yeah, Dan Hattiger and even my buddy Jensen from Los Angeles. Okay, so what I learned is it's the Cape Cod of Wisconsin. Is that right? That's that's what Michelle, Lisa's friend that we had dinner with. Oh, that's so funny because I just it. I got the impression that it was more like hippy dippy sort of Humboldt style. Nope, no? not at all. Oh wow. It's wine country, which is so odd considering there's winter eight months out of the year, but it is their wine country. Is that long enough for a grape to struggle? It's really? Not. It's not. And so we talked about it. We did a wine tour yeah. and they do get some of their grapes uh brought in from other areas. Oh, okay. Uh but they're known for their cherries. Is that right? Yeah. So Door Wisconsin County. Wisconsin cherries. I, is, thought it was, I always thought it was Washington I cherries. I did too. Okay. But no, they are known for their cherries. So they do cherry wine. Okay. Uh, lots of um, cherry like pies, cherry salad dressing. I mean, they are known for their Sounds cherries. Sounds exotic. The cherry pies. Did you try the salad dressing? I did. I wasn't over the top about the salad dressing, I have to tell you. But the cherry pie literally devoured. I got two pieces of cherry pie, one for me and then one for Lisa and Jody to split because I was not sharing mine. Plus they have a CrossFit tournament coming up. So yeah. And then have a problem splitting it. And then I ended up having some of theirs too. It made no <laughs> sense. It made no sense. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh my God. Uh-huh. So it's um, amazing you're as thin as you are. Uh it's catching up. 
Uh, and, uh, so it was really fun. Door County, we took a wine tour and learned about, uh, three vineyards that were there, um, how they make their wine, how they're able to do it during the winter. Mm -hmm. They basically said they just pray for like a light winter. I mean, that's what they said. And some of them get their grapes, not all of them. We visited three, but Mm -hmm. I do believe two out of the three got their, some of their grapes from other places. But, uh, you pull up and you see you see the grapes on the vine. You see the okay. whole the whole layout, the acres and acres of uh, of you know grapes being harvested. I'm, I'm dubious. Sorry. I think those are props. I actually walked through one, <laughs> and I have a really good video where it looks like it's Napa, but it's it's Door County, Wisconsin. Here's what's interesting about Door County. I thought Door County was just like one place, like. You just go to Door County, like you go to Milwaukee or you go to Malibu. Uh, No, Door County is an area with- Yeah, it's a whole county. That's the point, right? Isn't it like part of the stick that sticks out into the lake or whatever? Yeah. Yes. And there's different cities. So when you enter Door County, we went to Egg Harbor, which is one of the first cities that you see Mm -hmm. when entering Door County. Now- from when my, I asked Lisa, she said it's like 20 to 25 minutes between cities in Door County. So if you want to go from, you know, the start of Door County and like, I guess to the end, that may take an hour, an hour and a half. I mean, I, we didn't okay. do it. We, we went to the very first but town reasonably in Door County. you could spend a couple of days there, bounce around the little oh. hamlets and everything and, and find a good time. Hamlets. That is like the perfect word. Yeah. It is. They're little hamlets and they're so cute. So when you think of Cape just, Cod. It's just a German influence. That's how I came up with that word. Oh, well, it's actually seems like a hamlet because you go there and it's like a little town unto itself with a cute little main street, cute little restaurants. And you, you could spend an entire weekend, a Monday to a, a Friday to a Monday exploring it. And, you know, we only literally, and we only went to one. Okay. So, uh, it was great. We spent, it was two hours. Okay. As, as Lisa explained to me, everything is about 90 minutes from each other. Appleton was 90 minutes from Milwaukee. Um, Door County is 90 minutes from Appleton. Uh, I think Green Bay is 90 minutes from Door County. Like everything is 90 minutes. It's okay. crazy. That's pretty cool. It is very cool. And then- um, So what you're saying is you went to one place in Door County, but Door County is mostly untapped. Oh. That's really? a beer joke. I know. Really? Yeah. Oh, good one. Okay. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> um, yes, honey. Yes. So after we spent the day in Door County doing our wine tour and just exploring Egg Harbor, Lisa took us. What is to- it? Not Gig Harbor. Egg Harbor. Yeah, E G G. Oh, Egg Harbor. Yeah. Interesting name. Okay. Yeah. And it's beautiful. You drive. You see horses. You see vineyards. It's yeah, is just, that, I mean, is it hilly? Is it? Is there a lot of? I imagine it's green in yeah, the middle of summer. It's green and it's not like terribly hilly, but yeah, it's hilly. Okay. Yes, it's hilly, but it's not like crazy hilly. Like yeah. rolling hills. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, not like Napa or Temecula, no, where course. you're like you see houses on the top of these vineyards. No, right, it's just right. like. It's just like kind of hilly. But it's not flat. It's not no. plain. It's not the plains there. Not at all. Okay. Not Got at it. all. And as you're approaching Door County from Appleton and you're driving, it's quite beautiful. I mean, you're on the freeway, but it's green on both sides. It's just, it's farmland. It's beautiful. It's what you think it would be. Nice. Yeah. And then on the way back to Door, um, and then on the way back from Door County, because it was just a day trip for us, uh, Lisa took us to Lambeau Field. Oh, nice. So that's where the Green Bay Packers play. And obviously coming from Chicago, we're big rivals yeah. with the Packers, the Bears and the Packers. But like, let's be honest, Packers have, they've far surpassed the Bears the past few years. Okay. Uh, the I, past few years? How many? It's how at least many? a decade. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll give you a decade. Yeah. So, uh, so it was funny. She said, I'm going to make a Packers fan out of you after all. And you know, I love being there. I, I I thought it was incredible that you could just pull up to their stadium and have dinner. And and I thought, do people like do this often? So you can. You like one hundred. When you say dinner, there's what? There's a big restaurant there's inside. There's a or huge restaurant. Is it a number of places. Nineteen nineteen. I just could not get over the fact that on an off season, 
Um, right, because we're off season. Well, they started training camp now. Okay. Oh, it's, it's summer. Oh my gosh, I have to tell you about training camp. This is crazy. Okay, you went but- to training camp. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. Okay, so here's the premise: you go there during a game if you don't have a ticket, but you're with other fans and you're watching the game on yeah. like thirty big jumbotron, right? maybe forty flat screens in this place, mm-hmm. and it's enormous. I was blown away that she took us here. I mean, just blown away. I was, I just thought, why doesn't every stadium have this? Because if you're a fan, you'll go and just say, let's go to Lambeau Field right. and have dinner tonight with the family. Okay. There were so many people there with their Green Bay jerseys on, on a Friday night, having dinner with their families, like little kids. Okay. How about this? The gift shop was packed. This is like- Okay. August, the gift shop was packed and people were putting their jerseys on and going up and having dinner. Like nice. to me, I loved it. I was like, talk you think about- it was mostly tourists or locals or people getting ready for the new season or oh, a lot of both. both. I think it was both. Nice. I, mean, I, I was like hometown pride at its best. Like, That's great. right. Like, yeah. like team pride, not hometown, but yeah, team totally. pride. Like why doesn't every city have this? Like, this is incredible. Like, Boston stadium. A lot of the is. newer stadiums are starting to incorporate that. But that's not a newer stadium. No, no, Lambo's Lambo's way. To, first off, the team itself is like partially fan owned, right? Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah Lisa so told it's, me that. It's yeah. its whole. It's its whole. And it's its whole thing. It is. I Green not, Bay is Green Bay is sort of an anomaly on a on a handful of different levels. I learned, I learned that the um, Super Bowl trophy mm-hmm. is named after that coach. Yes, it is, honey. The Lombardi Trophy. Oh yes. my god, I could not believe. It. I said, "What is so special about this guy?" And Lisa's like, "Look him up." And I was like, okay, he's pretty, he's pretty fantastic. <laughs> he is pretty fantastic. <laughs> okay. This is what I learned. First of all, the Packers do their training camp at the field. Now the Bears go to Arizona, other teams go out to other places, but the Green Bay Packers actually do their training at Lambeau Field. So you know what they do? And it is a tradition. The field and where the athletes come out of their locker room is like a, a little bit of a distance. Kids will come with their bikes, like their little BMX bikes or whatever, Mm -hmm. and they will wait by the locker room and players will get on their bikes and ride their bike to the field. Oh, that's awesome. It is the cutest thing. So they have it all over the news where parents will bring their kids and they'll line up and the players will come out. Oh my gosh, can you imagine seeing a big 350 pound defensive Uh tackle like riding on one of those little bikes? It's brilliant. That's it is awesome. That's cute. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good flavor. Okay. It is the cutest thing. So we get there and we go up to the restaurant and we're sitting down and I'm just like amazed at this place because it's big. It's, it, it's really just so nice. Yeah. I mean, windows everywhere. Uh, you can see the part of the field from where you're, if you have certain seats. Uh, so I asked Lisa, I say, so do players ever come to this restaurant? And she's like, no, she's like, they're not eating here. She's like, they're, they're going to the games and they're leaving, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so I thought, oh, okay. Well, when the waitress came, cause I'm a tourist and I'm going to be silly at times. And I want to say and do touristy things. I'm, I'm living the life. Okay. So I say to the waitress, uh, I say right after Lisa tells me, you no. You basically told Lisa, I don't believe you. Yes. And you're going to ask the waitress. 100%. And yeah. so the waitress comes and I go, so do the players ever come here and eat? And she goes, yeah, there's one right behind you. So we can't really look. It's like his table's kind of diagonal, but I do, I kind of took a little glance and I started laughing. And I go the 12 year old because I walked past his table to get to the bathroom. And I was like, wow, that kid looks so young. I just remember like seeing a young kid and the waitress started laughing. She was like, yeah, he's a little bit older than that. So his name is, um, okay. Lisa and Jody knew immediately like who he was. Um, Anthony Johnson, I think, or something like that. Anthony Johnson Jr. Okay. So he was really, really young, yeah. but, um, I, so I was trying to explain. Yeah, well, he's, to- a, he's a rookie. Okay. Yes. So I was trying to explain to James who he was. Jody was telling me who he was and what position he played. And then when I was texting James that night, I was like, he's a safety or a running back or a defense lineman. And then you said, you said he's a running back or a safety, which are so diametrically opposed. (laughs) So then James said, just get the name for me. He's like, I need to know his name. So, uh, so it was just funny because he had just gotten done with training camp like probably an hour before and came up with what looked like maybe his family or girlfriend, or it was a bunch of people. There was like seven of them. Nice. And, uh, and I was like, wow, it's kind of cool. What a treat. Yeah. It was a treat. And I wanted to take a picture and they wouldn't let me. Oh God. (laughs) 
<laughs> they would not let me. They're like, no, no. I'm like, he's standing two feet from us. Really quick, let's do a selfie. Oh and they were like, gosh. no, I, I became that person. I literally, in two seconds flat, I became the person that I tell everyone not to you be. You are no longer welcome at Soldier Field. I know. You could not go to the South Suburbs on Sundays anymore. I could not. I I, I know. I, I just, I lost my mind for a minute. You did. Yeah. yeah. You got caught up in it. Uh-huh. So we did that. That's a good sign of a good town. I'm just saying. That's another one in the pro c- category. It is true, right? Like yeah. when you yeah, when forget you all- where you came from. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in the market for a new team. I'm an ex-Chargers fan, so maybe. When you have a moment where you forgot where you came from and you want to take a selfie with a Packer, you yeah. know you have just landed yourself in a really good town. Oh, and here's the best part. So the 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 stadium is built like in a neighborhood, just like if you've been to Wrigley Field in Chicago, there are houses all around. Uh, so the city- So you can just walk to the game if you live in certain areas? Better. Hmm. Better. You could ride a BMX bike. Better. What's that? How does it get better? Put a lawn chair out in your backyard. No way. It faces the field. What? Yes. You can see the game? You can see the lights and you can see other people. You can't see the field, so you'd need a TV. So let me just tell you something. We're in the restaurant and Jody says, how much would you hate living here? During season. And On I game said, days, yeah. I said, oh, it's horrific. Like you cannot get in and out of your driveway, right? This is what we say. <laughs> we pull out of the parking lot. The houses that face the parking lot, people built decks like yeah. five feet high, six feet high, 10 feet high to put chairs on top of and watch the game from their backyard. Every backyard had a fence or a like small wall that was painted with Green Bay colors or had the Green Bay insignia. We're talking hmm. mile. But they still need a television to watch a game. Some it's of them do. It's not like do. Murphy's ble- bleachers or anything like no, that. No, you still need a TV. Right. But you you could literally jump. But you feel like you're there. You could jump your fence and tailgate. Okay. You could jump your fence and tailgate. You can open up your fence. You don't okay. have to jump your fence. You what, can so open they're up not, your fence. They're not like total Nazis about people coming into the parking lot? You walk into the parking lot. Who's going to stop you? There's so many people walking into the parking lot. Nobody's yep. going to stop you. No, you're right. So yeah, they can tailgate yeah, with the fans. Yeah, they stop you at the gate. That's all. You can't get into the gate. Oh, well, you have to have a ticket to get yeah, in, totally. into the stadium. But I'm just saying, you can, you can go there and mill around and tailgate and do all that stuff yeah. and then go back to your yard and watch the game. 100%. It's <laughs> actually not a bad, it's not a bad afternoon for somebody with like three kids. You do know, you know how much Take your house them to is one worth? actual game or two actual games a year and then do that thing the rest of the time. It's pretty cool. Do you know how much your house is worth? No. Do you have any idea of the real estate value? Like, oh, those got to be like seven figure houses. Easily. And they're like little tiny houses. They're like, 1600 square feet. Yeah, because everybody wants to live there. Grandpa, his house is being handed down Mm -hmm. from generation to generation because they are right behind Lambeau Field. Like they're right there. It's it's incredible. And, you know, again, it's the Packers, it's their team. So everyone has like so much team pride and the backyards are in green and yellow. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Jody and I thinking this is a nightmare. (laughs) And we were so wrong. We were so wrong. So uh, you went to Lambeau Field and then what? Uh, from there, we went back to Appleton and spent the uh, rest of our time going to the Mile of Music. Okay. Yeah. But you got to meet some of Lisa's family. Let's talk about I that. I did. So um, I got to meet one of our listeners mm-hmm. who is Lisa's sister. Her name is Lori Hyde. Lori. And she has been listening to us from the beginning. She comments on our Facebook post. She comments on YouTube. Uh, she will send us like great little tidbits of information about like her, like where she lives. So meeting a listener is always the best because they ask really interesting questions. Yeah. Um, I get to ask them questions about what makes them so proud of where they live and yeah. what they love about where they live. And Lori did not disappoint. Okay, good. So I got to hang out with her for a couple of hours. She brought a cake from one of the most um, well-known bakeries in Appleton. And um, we had a little dessert. We had a lot of talking. I got to see where Lori lives. Uh, It was just really great. So I got to meet Lisa's parents who were really wonderful and gracious and invited Jody and I into their home. And you know, they asked us a little bit about the podcast, what we do. I learned a little bit about them. They're both retired and what they've done. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a beautiful piece of property in Appleton. Okay. Uh, it's gorgeous. They've been there 
like almost their entire adult life. They're OGs, yeah. Yes. So, you know, they've seen it grow substantially. Right. Okay. So uh, Milwaukee is off your list. Appleton too close weather-wise. Yeah, unfortunately. It's also off your list. It is. Like you can get the house you want because there's plenty of property, but you have to deal with the winters. And um, Come on, babe. Let's go sledding. I think I just don't want to break a hip. I really don't want to Legit break a hip. Concern. So I don't want to fall on that blue ice or black ice or whatever the hell it's called that you don't see. <laughs> black ice. Right? Isn't yeah, that what it's called? It's black ice. Yeah. I didn't, there was no such thing as black ice when I was growing up. It was like, don't slip yeah, on the ice. Yeah, just ice. Yeah, now it's like black ice. I'm like, okay, so whatever the hell mm-hmm. that ice is called, I don't want to break a hip on it. Yeah. So I can't do winter. I just can't. Like when Lisa said, well, you can just, you know, stay in your Florida house uh, during the winter months. <laughs> I was like, but I have renters. No, that's an investment. I was like, wait, I can't do that. She's like, just, she's like, she's like, you can just, you know, I'm like, what? Like, no, I cannot do yeah. that. So, um, no. so then I don't know. Like I, I loved everything about it. Okay. I loved every single thing about it. So if you don't mind the snow, you have to check out Milwaukee. If you want to like be near a big city, but don't quite want to live in a big city, then check out Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, both of those were fantastic. They are at the top of my list. Take away the winner. Mm. Well, that's a huge strike for you. It sounds yeah. so, so it falls off the list. So it goes on the list, then immediately falls off the list. Okay. So you only love it in the summer. You are fickle. You're I very am. fair weathered. I am, but that city has everything. Literally fair weathered. That's what the term means. I know, I know, I know, I know. The airport's really close. Grocery stores are nearby. Okay. I can go on and on. The art, the art, the art museum, beautiful. They have lake. I mean Well, I'm gonna go. <sighs> I'm gonna go. Oh, I want to take you, but we're going to go between June and September. No, we're going to do a boys trip. Oh, no, you're not going. Yeah, we're going to do a boys trip. You've already done a boys trip. No, stop that. Maybe next year. Like Bill Bill thought after reading our social media, Bill is my buddy who joined me in Egypt, if you remember. I think you joined him. I I did, actually, to be correct. Um, Now it's your trip that he joined you on. It's your trip. Now it somehow has turned into your trip that Bill joined you on. I know. I'm like your your debate friends. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) You took over Jeffrey Dahmer. I did. I took over Jeffrey Dahmer's story. Uh I went to Egypt. It was all my idea. Um, No, Bill texted me because he saw you posting things on our social media page. That I was in Milwaukee. And he was like, I will come right now. Let's go see the Brewers play or let's do something. And I'm like, bro, I'm not even there. Like she's on her own thing this week. Oh, so now you're planning a a trip to go see the Brewers. Yeah, no, you could take me for sure. You've already been there. You know the lay of the land. I really want to. I mean, the one thing I kept saying while I was there is I really want to bring James here, but but we have to schedule it around weather. That's Are you it. afraid I'm going to like it and you're going to be stuck there in the winter? No, because you won't. You you won't like it. It's so cold. You forget how cold it is. Like you have, like you literally have forgotten. I haven't been in the cold in like 25 I years. So need- I'm about to find out in the next couple of months because- Where are you going? Well, last year when winter came, we were not heading north. We were heading south. And this year, everything we have planned is either in the Midwest or in the north. I don't think I'm doing the winter. I don't think I am. So no, I think we're going to be stuck in the winter when we're checking out some of these. We're, we're talking Providence, Rhode Island. I know it's not winter yet, but we'll see. Vermont, Michigan, all these Why places. Why would I visit in the winter if I don't want to move to the snow? If you don't want, maybe you'll find out. Like people have told us, like, you know, quit bad mouthing the weather because it's not as bad up here as you think in the winter. In I'm from Chicago. Places. I know how bad Your, it is. Chicago's the worst. Like, come on. That's the litmus test for everybody. If it's not as bad as Chicago, <laughs> it could be worth looking at. That's all I'm saying. So, all right, You have a point there, which I really cannot argue because I mean, if it's not I, as bad as I, Chicago, you're When right. I think of the coldest states, you know, in, in the uh, contiguous, contiguous, continuous United States, uh-huh. in the continental, you know, well, Alaska is still part of the continent, I guess. But when I think of- Cold states. When I think when I think of the South Forty Eight, <laughs> <laughs> the two cities that ring terror into my heart in the middle of winter are Chicago, which I've already warmed up to, and Minneapolis. I've heard nightmare stories. Oh, so yeah. All right. Uh, so you're saying anything outside of those two is I'm is just saying question, there's potential there. Potential. There's potential. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Are you? We pick- could always go down to Corpus Christi for a little while. Like our daughter hasn't invited us, but I'm just saying, if we need to escape, we uh, may have an out. You have a plan. I do. I knew there was something up because you want to visit a cold weather state. I'm like sitting here going, who are you? So you have an out. Oh, I like options now. Okay. All right. I fine. had no options in LA for 25 years. I had to stay there. 
my business was there. My kids were there. Their schools were there. Everything. I'm open to that then. Like, I didn't think about the options. Okay. I, I'm not sure Parker is going to be on board with this, but. Oh, yeah. I don't think know. she is at all. Yeah. No. Uh-uh. This is our plan. She's got her boyfriend now and everything. Yeah. Like, she doesn't even ask to see us anymore. No. No tears. Yeah. No calling. No text. No no text emojis with tears. I miss you. No. no. Uh-uh. But anyway, we're going to get back to Wisconsin. Okay. I have a question to ask you. What do the ladies talk about on a road trip? What, what do ladies talk about on the ladies trip? They don't talk about- Are you about- a vault right now? Or can you, You're sworn to secrecy or there's just a code? No. Um, it's funny you ask. What do we talk about? We don't talk about guys much, no. like our husbands much at all. Uh, we talked about- <laughs> Oh, see? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I just, I, I imagine, I don't, I think you guys are probably of a certain age, maybe I'm wrong, where there's not a like, not a lot of filthy talk, but I do imagine there's a lot of talk that goes on. Okay. That is true. Yeah. Okay. That, that is That never true. dies. Nope. That never dies. You're right about that. Yeah. I, I, that is the Chicago in me 100%, but I have found a friend who is just like me, but she's little and really super strong. Jody. Yeah. Jody's from New Orleans. So she started drinking when she was 12. We okay. Did, we did not even talk about her in the Mexico episode, but she was one of my favorite parts of that trip. Oh, Jody. Okay. When I told James I was on this trip with Jody, his response was, She's a pisser. I'm going to put her in my pocket and take her with me because she's yeah. like five, three, full of like just funny stories little foul mouth, can drink you under the table, yeah. pretty as can be, like can be a, a lady, dresses, can be a cute like girl when she needs to be, mm-hmm. but can do like 57 chin-ups. She's just cool as can be. I'm so glad Lisa brought her. The one day you got a little tipsy and we got, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe we almost left that out. But before we talk about uh-huh. that, she texted me and she said, oh, your favorite little pocket pissers here. Uh-huh. And uh, she sent a picture of Jody, And I said, I, I love her so much. If, if she and I were to go to a bar together, I would be her sidekick. She wouldn't be mine. Oh, you would for sure be She's her sidekick. She's a leader. She's Lisa, a leader. She's a leader. And you know, it's always- a And little, I'm happy to follow It, it is in always, that particular case. Yeah. It is yeah. always the little ones that are the leader. Like, okay, I'm 5'10". Lisa, I think, is 5'11", because Lisa's oh, taller Lisa's than like me. Lisa's probably six right? feet tall, yeah. Is Lisa six? Okay. Maybe 5'11". So I'm five. No, I'm so sorry. I'm 5'9". Lisa's probably like 5'11". Jody's again, like 5'3". Okay, maybe Jody, if she's listening, she's going to say she's 5'5". Five five. So whatever, but I'm not going to- You're 5'6", Jody, in our hearts. Yeah. Okay. But she, the little one is always- like the ringleader. Of course. I mean, it is hysterical. Like we all just like kind of were tagging along with Jody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just like being around people that entertain me and her entertainment value is like IMDB quality. So what's DB? IMDB. Why? Oh, IMDB. Internet Movie Database. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. An, it's a website. They launched it in like <laughs> 1998. I don't know. Okay. Stop I'm going to send it. you a link. I thought you were saying I A M D B. I'm like, what's an IMDB? Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, okay. So well, we to answer your question. Yes, you got hammered. No, we, we talked people. You uh-huh. asked me what we talked yeah. about. You just started laughing out of nowhere a second ago. I want to know what that laugh's all about. Okay, <laughs> you can keep that to so keep it to yourself. Or- uh huh. Yep. All right, Lisa, Jody, your secret's safe. Uh huh. Um, but you did get a little tipsy the one day. It was fun, and you were pretty vocal about it. You were texting me, and you're like, "I'm going to be hammered." Oh yeah. Uh huh. Because we went to you're, a bar. Yeah, you were crushing what? Dirty snowballs, and I don't. All I know is that they're white Russians. I thought they were. Oh, you did those too? Because you texted me that you were doing uh, some sort of old fashioned. Yeah. And then we jumped to the old fashioned. Okay. So we did like dirty <laughs> snowballs, which is like a white Russian, but they're in a tum Like what's that thing called? Like a, it's not, like, the tumblers are little, right? Are tumblers no. big? Okay. Tumblers are big. It was in a tumbler. It looked like a, a big gulp from 7-Eleven. That's how big it was with alcohol, but it's like a slushy. Okay. And so um, we had two of those each. Mm-hmm. Then- Old fashions are really popular in Wisconsin. So Lisa said, we have to order an old fashioned. I've never had an old fashioned. So I guess there's a sour. You had an old fashioned sour. And there's a sweet. So Lisa got the sour. 
And it was delicious. And then we had another <laughs> one after that. It was you were crushing so high end whiskey sours. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, it was so good. And then we just hung out and listened to music and had the best time. It was so much uh-huh. fun. And the bar was packed at 2 p.m. Well, yeah, 2 that's PM. right. Yeah, you told me. I, yeah. I took a video and um, I think I even put it on my story at that point. But I think I'll add it to my feed now once this uh, podcast streams so you can see the bar at 2 p.m. was packed. There was a line outside the door. Like, There's other bars. Nope, this was the one. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, sounds like a good time was had by all. It was. Mad respect for Lori, by the way. Big shout out. Thank you so much for following us this entire time. I know. Props to Lisa's family for putting up with you and Jody at the same time. <laughs> My Lord. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you are the new poster girl for for Wisconsin. I am Eastern Wisconsin. I have my Blatt's like baseball cap, my Mile of Music t shirt. Yeah. I am the super fan. Uh, I think there's another trip in store for me, Jody, and Lisa. We got along so well. Good. I invited them to come to the villages. Oh, <laughs> what? It what? is just like Milwaukee. No, it's not. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do you know how much fun we're going to have on that golf cart? You guys will totally have fun, yeah. Yeah. So I told have them- fun wherever you are. Pickleball, golf, golf karting. Like, I think it's my turn to show them around. Okay. Sounds like a week that I can spend somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so next trip's on me, girls. Next trip's on me, and we're coming, you're coming to the villages. Let's fast forward to your top five. Okay, top five. This is really easy. Uh, I'm going- Is there a bottom five other than the weather? I only heard weather, 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 weather. No bottom five. Okay. There's literally no bottom five. Good. So then it is appropriate. We go straight to the top. Yeah. So uh, top five was, um, I love that they have free transportation. That's always great when you go to a city. And yep. even though the hop is limited, you can get to the major destination places you want to go in the city for free. I love that. And you can get liquored up while doing it. Go on. I love that they make it very easy for you to get around the city and enjoy all the things the city has to offer. Meaning if you want to go spend the day at the beach, uh, you have volleyball, you have little tiki huts to get yourself a cocktail and some food. They have like food vendors out there. Uh, They make it so simple. Parking along the lake, get this, free. What? Really? It's unbelievable. They want you to stay. It's not like other cities where they're like, we want to make as much money off of you and we're going to have parking at the beach 30 minutes. Turn them and burn them. Yeah. It's like, because they know by the time you unpack your car and you're settled, then you have to come back and feed the meter. I mean, it's a joke, but not in Milwaukee. Parking free by the beach. They make it super easy. Uh, I love their Bloody Marys. That's number three. Okay. And a sandwich. In With parentheses. A right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Food and a drink. I love that. Yeah. I love that they have so many music venues that you can see one of four bands on a Tuesday night all within walking distance. I love that. Yeah. And my fifth one is the architecture. Uh, you could do a walking tour, which I would highly suggest. Mm. Uh, we we had a tour in Milwaukee that included it was both walking and we got in a car. But if you wanted to just do a walking tour of the city, do it. Beautiful architecture, lots of history. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, I'm glad you had a great time. God knows you needed it. You came back in such a great mood. Aw. Glowing. I think I always glow. And not sick of me. Give it time. Yeah. It doesn't take very long, actually. Just don't touch that radio. Just don't touch that radio. (laughs) It's right. No heavy metal ever. So uh, that wraps up this episode. We're going to see you guys next week. Why don't you take them out? Empty nest, full tank. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.